This is devotional number 87, and this week we're looking at three topics, the Bible, the Savior, and eternal life, that, are, that have to do with the things most precious to the elect. And yesterday we started looking at the Bible, and I'd like to continue today. In particular, I'd like us to look at a passage in 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, or God breathed, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect or complete, truly furnished unto all good works. It might be helpful uh, to look at this verse in some detail uh, today, because it explains in a nutshell a number of principles that are absolutely vital to the child of God. Uh, Immediately we see that the Bible proceeds from the mouth of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God or God breathed. This fact is of utmost importance as we approach the Bible, and we must never lose sight of it. The word translated doctrine is Strong's number uh, 1319, and it's also found in Romans 15:4, where it's rendered as learning. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. Deuteronomy 32, 1-2 further explains that God is not only the author of all doctrine, which is the entire Bible, but as we uh, have seen in other passages, his words powerfully accomplish his will in the lives of all human beings who have ever lived. Uh, We read, for example, in Isaiah 55, 8 through 11, give ear, I'm sorry, this is not Isaiah 55, 8 through 11. It's Deuteronomy 32, 1 to 2. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. The word that is uh, rendered a reproof is Strong's number 1650. And we only find this one other time. And it's in Hebrews 11.1 1, where it's translated as evidence. I'll read verses 1 to 3 in order for you to get the context. Now, faith is the substance, which can also be translated confidence or person. Faith is the person of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear." These verses show that faith is actually a person. The Lord Jesus Christ, who is named faithful or full of faith in Revelation 19.11. He is also the confidence or person of things hoped for, the evidence or proof of things not seen. Uh, This is also reiterated in verse 3 where it says, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. A similar idea is also expressed in 2 Corinthians 4.18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are temporal eternal. The word translated correction, which is only found in this verse, is a derivative of the word 
of, of another um, uh, Greek word which um, is uh, found uh, in another passage, and I can't think of the passage right now, but it's, uh, the Greek term is, is orthos, which, which means uh, to cut straight. Uh, actually, it, it is is found in Second Timothy uh, two fifteen, and it has to do with rightly dividing the word of truth. It's actually a compound word made up of these two Greek words, ortho, from which we get our English word orthodontist, someone who straightens out teeth, and tomeo, which is the word um, to cut. Uh, and the idea behind the this I, this word rightly dividing it means to to cut straight or to correctly rightly interpret the Bible, uh, and so this correction uh, has to do with straightening out our doctrinal errors through the scriptures themselves. And correction is an ongoing process that. Uh, is uh, taking place within the child of God from the moment he becomes saved right up until his death or until the Lord uh, returns, whichever comes first. Uh, but uh, this helps him to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we must also be very willing and open to receive this kind of correction from the Word of God. And uh, a helpful analogy as far as the idea of uh, straightening one, one, uh, one out uh, doctrinally, uh, we see this in an, in an analogy in Luke 13, 10 to 13. Uh, and it says there, And he was teaching in one of the synagogues, on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and glorified God. And again, we know that this spiritually is a, a, a historical parable having to do with salvation. Uh, however, at the same time, we also see that it is, it is helpful in understanding that God lovingly corrects his people so that they can uh, be more faithful and, and adhere more closely to the word of God. Uh, the last phrase we want to look at uh, today in 2 Timothy 3.16 is instruction in righteousness. And it's used six times, and it's translated uh, only here as instruction. The other five times it is uh, translated as chastening, chastisement, uh, or n nurture. Uh, we'll look at this last one. Uh, in the time we have left, uh, nurture is also found in Ephesians 6, 4, which is a very important verse for those of us who are fathers. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And nurture is Strong's number 3808. So these four components a doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness constitute the purpose of the Bible in the life of each of God's elect so that indeed the man of God may be perfect or complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works.